There we go, there we go, YouTube. Okay, feeling so good. It is 60 degrees out. It's ridiculous. It's January. What are we doing, Denver? I definitely overdressed. I need to be packing some lighter clothes. This is just getting a little out of control. Okay, went five miles, 8K, 740 a mile. So, you know, a little faster compared to the previous two or three days and definitely the fastest I've gone since coming off of the break just you know getting waking the legs up a little bit waking the legs up a little bit and I wanted to focus today really really focus on my form and on my foot striking so how is my foot striking the ground I believe and this is my theory is that the shorter the race the less margin of air for your overall biomechanics. So as you know, your, your form, you're pumping your arms, driving your knees, your foot striking, your overall stride. Like for example, in the 800 meters, you need to be basically perfect. Have you ever seen David Radisha, the 800 meter world record holder, run an 800 meter? It's beautiful. Look it up on YouTube, look it up on YouTube. He runs so, it's like the perfect stride for the 800 meters. So anyway, as I transition from the ultra marathon back down to the marathon and half marathon distance in 2019, I know that the margin of error with my biomechanics is going to decrease. Therefore, today it's early in 2019, but it is not too early to begin focusing on my form and my biomechanics and my foot striking. All right, I'm excited about that. We're gonna make videos about that soon. Okay, had the Gooder sunglasses, Gooder sunglasses, and uh, the Solomon XA hat on, and this hat is starting to show some holes on top, and so I'm probably gonna be getting a new Solomon hat soon. Uh, the Sun 2 Ambit Peak 3 watch, which again, I'm probably going with Garmin based on everyone's comments that I've been reading over the past two or three days, probably going with Car uh, Garmin moving forward. Okay, the long sleeve, and this is where I overdressed. Let me just, I'm just gonna pull the tag off for you guys and just, cause it feels so comfortable. Hold on, ah, there it is. There it is, okay, what does this say here? We got polyester, 50%. Cotton, 25%, 25, and then rayon, 25%. Not sure what rayon is. That sounds a little dangerous, but this is comfortable. Remember, I like that blend when it comes to uh, wearing outerwear. I don't like just straight polyester or straight dry fit. Uh, anyway, that's that's just what I lean toward. Okay, and then Nike half tights, uh, and then dry max socks, and then the New Balance Zante 4s, but I probably should have worn a different shoe because I ended up uh, running a lot on dirt today and mud and these guys are definitely road shoes but I couldn't resist the dirt couldn't resist the dirt so they're all muddy now but uh, they felt they felt good I must say though they weren't perfect that first mile my legs were trying to figure the shoe out so anyway I got to put some more miles into these Zante 4s all right we are off to a coffee shop to do some work finish off the work day and yes I'm going to be putting in a little bit of time for the training uh, regimen training schedule moving forward I'm, I'm just putting the finishing touches on it which I will share with you uh, maybe later today oh Oh, I, trust me, I know, I know, I, I know. For, oh, I, as soon as I go over like 50 miles a week, like I, I, like the body just is in charge. Like the body tells me how much I need to sleep. So, um, I, I totally get it. All right. Yeah. We'll talk soon. Okay. Bye. Oh my goodness. Ladies and gentlemen, just got off the phone with a vlog fan and basically, uh, this vlog fan is uh, attempting to get me into the New York City Marathon. We're just like putting all the cards on the table and seeing if my times, my PRs, which we talked about, what, two days ago on the vlog, if they're going to be fast enough to basically convince some people that I can race the New York City Marathon and other marathons in 2019. We're in 2019 now. Grandma's Marathon. I just got an email back. I'll update you in a minute about what they said. The Grandma's Marathon. And yes, we're going to talk about marathon training and basically some tips that I will give to you that I'm planning to apply to this next block of training. It's so crazy. Oh, I'm amped up. I'm amped up. YouTube family, it is time. It is time to talk about marathon training. And yes, roll call, roll call. Down in the comments, hit it up. 
who is racing a marathon in 2019? Raise your hand down in the comments. Let us know. I am embarking upon a new adventure by coming back down. And by the way, for all the new subscribers in the last, let's say, week, uh, welcome, by the way. It's amazing you're here. And just so you know, I have been doing ultra races over the past three years. So 50 Ks, which is 31 miles, uh, 50 milers, and 25 mile trail races. And yes, I even attempted a 100 mile race. I did not finish it, but what I'm doing now in 2019 is transitioning from long distance racing beyond marathons back down to the marathon distance. And why am I doing that? Well, four months ago in Denver, Colorado at elevation 5,000 Denver, the nickname for Denver is the mile high city because the elevation of the city limits is 5,000. 280 feet above sea level exactly a mile and four months ago i did a time trial solo on a little bit of a rolly course and thankfully i was able to run a one hour 10 minute and 59 second half marathon up at elevation solo which opened my eyes with basically no speed training which opened my eyes to the fact that wait a minute Maybe I should pause this 50 mile business and this 100 mile business and focus a little more on the shorter distances, half marathons and marathons. If you're transitioning back, yeah, it's like it's shorter for me. But what I'm about to tell you about marathon training, you got to remember that it's all about knowing thyself and knowing your past experience with running. Specifically, how much volume have you been running over the past six months, over the past 12 months? And yeah, I like to even look at it over the past three years. What is your volume? How many miles are you running per month, per year? Because that will impact how much your body is able to handle in, yes, deciding what is my training regimen going to be for preparing for a marathon. And if this is your inaugural year in 2019 to race your first marathon, kudos to you. High five. Welcome to the club. I am in that position. And by the way, some of you have asked if I would basically provide you a marathon training schedule. And I, it's, an interesting, it's an interesting idea, but keep in mind, I don't know your story. I don't know what your body is able to handle because I'm, I'm not your coach. And in addition, I would not feel comfortable. A couple other people have asked, like, would I consider selling my a, a marathon training plan? Right now, January 4th, I think it is, 2019, I would not feel comfortable. Talk to me in six months, okay? If I've never raced a marathon distance, no, I would not feel comfortable selling a training plan until I put it through the paces, my own personal ideas. Okay, five tips for marathon training that maybe you can absorb into your training regimen for a marathon, but keep in mind, I don't know your exact situation. Uh, feel free to ask questions down below. If I have time, I'll do my best to answer them, but if you're a marathon veteran, and I know you're out there, I know there's people that have run five plus marathons, definitely don't be afraid to chime into some of the comments with it when there's questions from us rookies, including myself, but I have raced enough 50Ks to feel confident enough to share some ideas and tips with all of you. Okay, tip number one, of course, the long run. You got to do a long run. Even if you're training for a 5K or a 10K, like you need to do a long run. I'm not going to say once a week. I'm just going to say you need to do a long run in your training block um, and more than one. So what I have heard through the, through the grapevine from many people, Usually in a marathon race, you hit a wall at some point. Some people talk about it at 18 miles. Some people talk about it at 20, even 22 sometimes. But usually your legs start barking at you at about, from what I've heard, the 20 mile mark. So six miles to go. Therefore, what I plan to do in my training leading into my first marathon is do two long runs, one six weeks out from the race, and one three weeks out from the race, both 22 miles in, in length. So a long run, I don't know if it'll be on a Saturday or a Sunday, I don't know, but at six weeks out, I'm gonna do 22 miles. Now why 22 miles? 
Basically, I know from experience that at mile 19, my legs are starting to bark at me. And then at mile 20, you're like, ugh, okay, this is really gonna be painful. Therefore, if we can practice getting our muscle memory used to being tired at mile 20, and then, and then, push through that wall for another two miles in your training and i'm not i'm not saying go 24 miles i'm not saying go 20 miles i'm saying 22 miles exactly we will be training ourselves to push through the wall and then and then banking on the fact that you're going to be in a race and that your adrenaline hopefully and just basically the crowds around you and all of the other racers like okay if i can make it to 22 four miles to go four miles to go i can finish this race okay so that's my strategy for the long run tip number two uh where is it plyometrics that's right what i talked about earlier in the parking lot having that form in our running the last 20 percent of a 15 to 20 percent of a race is when our form meaning our arm swing our knee drive how our our ankles are pushing us off of the pavement all of that begins to break down, especially the last 20, 15 to 20% of a race. So plyometrics, basically another way to say that is form drills, which the video is coming, I'm working on it, uh, where I'm gonna show you the exact form drills and plyometrics that I will be doing over the next, really the next five months in order to train my body, train my muscle memory, and really just to, and to get stronger, my ligaments, my tendons, my muscles, so that when that pain really starts to set in, probably around mile 21 or 22, I'll be able to push through that pain threshold and be like, okay, my form is still moving me forward. All right, I could talk about that all night. That's tip number two. Tip number three, tempo runs. Eight to 10 mile tempo runs at race pace. So there it's marathon pacingchart.com I believe I'll put it down below or I'll put it in the title somewhere marathon pacingchart.com you can go there and look up your goal race time and then it'll show you mile by mile the pacing that you should be trying to hit for your marathon so I think I'm okay I'm probably gonna go closer 10 to 12 miles but I'm guessing for a lot of you that are maybe newer to the marathon distance I would recommend 8 to 10 maybe 8 to 11 mile tempo runs at race pace four weeks before your marathon and two weeks before the marathon okay so an 8 to 10 mile maybe 11 maybe 12 if you have a little more experience with longer distances tempo run for me oh my goodness Oh my goodness, if I could attempt to race 515 miles uh, for a marathon, whoa, that would be very, very good for grandmas or any marathon I do ever. 515 a mile, I, that's my really kind of like a goal pace for me. So you got to know your goal pace and then apply it to an 8 to, uh, yeah, 8 to 10 mile tempo run and do it twice before your marathon race, uh, four weeks out and then two weeks out. That's what I plan to do in this next training block. Uh, so anyway, that's tip number three. Okay, tip number four. 10-day training cycles versus seven-day training cycles. I, again, I know everybody has to work. I know sometimes you're not able to do a long run uh, in the middle of the week, maybe in the summertime as the days get longer, you know? Instead of hitting that happy hour, you lace it up and you go get that long run in in the middle of the week. I am just a little... Uh, concerned, frankly, just for my personal health, if I focus too much on a long run every seven days. That's what a lot of cross-country programs do across the nation, and I get it. I get it based on life schedules and everything else. Sometimes you can't, you just have to do that. But I just want to caution you that your body might begin to get very tired after four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks of high volume training, getting ready for a marathon. Therefore, I think it's okay. I really think it's okay to do a long run on Sunday and then a long run 10 days later on a Wednesday. That's okay. You don't have to do a long run every single, like every seven days. Just be careful. Like anyway, if you can handle it, 
I'd say that I'd say that's a bonus, but for me, I'm going to lean a little more toward the 10 day training cycle. All right. And it takes a little more planning. I realize, but that's what I'm going to do. Who knows? Let me know what you think about that down in the comments. All right. And the last tip that I have for marathon training, use your surroundings, Denver, Colorado, no beaches here. There's no, we don't have an ocean here. All right. We're landlocked. But if you have access to a beach, if I had access to a beach, I would consider uh, running on the beach, let's say like once every 10 days to build ankle strength, calf strength, uh, work on my form. And now I know running on sand, and I'm not mean like real, real soft sand, but just like a little bit of sand, uh, again, just to build strength. So like if you live by an ocean, use the sand. For me, I live by mountains, big, big mountains with elevation. You better bet your bottom dollar, however that saying goes, that I'm going to use those mountains for training leading up to my marathon. In fact, today I found a a paved road on, the, on a map where it starts at 8,600 feet, tops out at 11,000 feet, and it's exactly... 13 miles, exactly 13 miles from 8,600 feet to 11,000 feet. You better, now listen, I love uphill running, so that's not like a, it's it's not a ton of vertical for me, but you better believe I'm going to use my surroundings to help me prepare for my first marathon. And guess what? I am envious. I am envious of some people in Eastern Kansas. I have driven through Eastern Kansas where there are some beautiful, beautiful rolling dirt hills. We don't really have those in Colorado. It's either mountains or kind of flat as a pancake, like really nice. Okay. I'm exaggerating a little bit. We do have some rolling dirt hills, but I mean, there's just some places in Kansas. So if you're in Kansas, let me know in the comments and like use those rolling dirt hills to your advantage. So I would make the argument that wherever you live, you can find the natural landscape around you and use it to your advantage for your training. Um, yeah, I will stop there. I could go on all day. As you can tell, I'm a little fired up. Okay. Keyword marathon, keyword marathon. And the question of the day, eh, oh gosh, here we go. If you are a marathon, uh, if you have marathon experience, that is not me specifically, but I know you're out there. What's your tip for marathon training? One or two tips down in the comments. And if you have a lot of marathon experience, like definitely like if you feel comfortable sharing just like tips and tricks that you have found for the specific marathon distance, that would be amazing. And second question of the day, if you're not getting ready for a marathon or you've never raced a marathon, do you have aspirations to race a marathon at some point in your life. Okay, thank you for answering. And I know that was a lot. Oh my goodness, those are the five tips that I have for now for marathon training. Again, I am formulating my game plan. Like I'm, I'm going back inside my house right now to, well, not finish it off, but to be, re really start to get into the details of workouts. I have my mileage laid out, but I really wanna get into the details of the workouts tonight. Seek beauty work hard and love each other. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. See you tomorrow. Mm, here we go. Here we go. Here we go.